Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Friday Night Roguelikes. Oops. Uh, I come to you run already in... Jesus. Run already in progress. Small myself down there. Uh, normally I wouldn't do this, but... This is a good run. Uh, so we're playing Slay the Spire again. Uh, I've started to really enjoy the silent here. I think... She's neat. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, I got lucky and I got wrist blade early on, which makes all of my uh, my knifey boys do way more damage. And so you see that we have a quite a combo going here between those two I really enjoy the silent um, the silent has two major specs compared to the sorry let me adjust that Silent has two major specs uh, compared to the ironclad or anyone else um, the silent has Sorry, I just started recording. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, Silence got um, either knife or poison. Shiv deck is one, which is where you just generate as many knives as you possibly, possibly can, and then just keep that going all the way. So here, for example, this card summons a knife. Because of Wrist Blade, this does more damage. There are more things that'll do even more damage, but... So you see we do a lot of appreciable damage. We haven't really unlocked the cards that make this thing really sing. Uh, there are two. Two that I really, really like. One is... Well, there, there are three, really. One is a card that just puts shivs in your hand every the start of every single turn. One is a card that uh, makes shivs do more damage. This one, actually. Accuracy. Accuracy can be cast as many times as you please. Finisher's good. Um, and each time it makes shivs do more damage. So we've now lifted to gain permanent strength, which is a thing available through this. This guy's kind of a problem. So yeah, we just permanently have one strength on us. For at least this fight. I don't know how long it lasts. I've never really used this uh, this thing before. Uh, I don't have my, well, my wife's uh, little bamboo thing up behind me, so. Let's do this. Because uh, that'll trigger him to transform, and then we don't even have to worry about uh, trying to avoid that damage. Well laid plans and defense. Let's drink an attack potion. Ooh, Predator's good. The reason that it's good is because it's free. And then, now I don't have to worry about taking damage. And thanks to Retain, I can hold on to this strike. Retain is another thing. Um, some people prefer to have a silent spec where you kind of meddle in both. Okay, this is going to be great. 13 damage but another two every time we cast, so. We'll hit him with Storm of Steel, and all of these become these. 15 damage. But it's actually 18 damage because every time we're hitting him for extra. And because these attacks are all essentially free, we're basically good. I would have liked to have been able to retain and keep Finisher, because we did use a lot of attacks, but that's okay. Um, I 
That'll deal 20 damage. So let's use this. And hold on to my blocking card. See, we're playing very aggressively, as you can see. 13 damage. And now we can just do one of these again. Another 18 damage a, a pop. So yeah, being aggressive with shift deck really helps. Um, so let's actually go for a power deck. And Venom is a thing that makes you just... Ooh, tiny house. Mm, tiny house is really good, but let's go for Busted Crown. Because I do want more energy to spend on uh, things and stuff. Let's go here. Oh, great. It's a pear thing. Dump your strength. Cool. So yeah, ordinarily I would not start a video in the middle of a run considering it's my roguelike show, but in this is in this instance I was having a pretty good run. Uh, Dagger Spray is really good on this enemy because every time he gets hit, uh, his armor reduces. Like how much he gets per armor reduces. Uh, and poison would actually be pretty solid on this guy. Let's get that started in here actually little bit of a misplay there but that's alright I could have cast Invenom first and gotten another proc of poison on him but yeah, this means that he will lose that amount of stuff every single time So because we don't have that many cards, now it's better to do finisher. And that procs every every hit. So it can be really good to um, pop finisher after you've had a huge use of shivs where you just like shiv, 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 shiv. That's very helpful. Like one of these. There you go. See, if we were to have used... Um, yeah, I'll take it. It gives us a discard, and we have a card that procs upon discard. Gremlin Shuffling Cards. He's a harmless one. 12 cards. Match him. 5 tries. No duo of us. Oop. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that. I have difficulty in getting more than 2 cards out of that. Although, at one point, my wife did it and um, got poison cards just... Curse cards, rather. Cards that hurt the, uh, hurt the player. Alright. So this dude's whole mechanic is based around the fact that he has a uh, barricade up. Which means that he cannot be... Uh, his armor does not go down at the end of a turn. So we kind of have to chew through him here. Ah, oh, damn. He's really got me every which way I turn. But that's okay. Um, I'm hoping to get enough... Let's discard this. Let's sneaky him. And then we'll invent him. And then steal. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, that's a useful card. Um, I want to hit at least one shop. We've got one here and here, so... Let's go to the question mark next. I feel confident about that. These guys are annoying. Um, they have an interesting mechanic, though. Wherein, upon them... Uh, upon their getting hit... 
they will uh, lose one thing of this. And until they lose this, they have uh, essentially double their health. They they take half the normal damage. Drop that. So you can see that he's just dropped down to one, which means we can just hit him like that. And now he's stunned and can't do anything. Uh, which means we next... We now can do normal damage to him, but we will be able to do that until he gets up, so we may as well put some more damage on this fella. Yeah, I want to get into some things about Slay the Spire. Um, one thing that I've noticed is that the enemies you fight are kind of... How about this? They're basically always the same guys. There we go. Um, the idea is that I was actually talking about this with a friend. The idea is that every single group of enemies is meant to be a problem, a solvable problem for that matter. Hmm. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, every enemy is meant to be a solvable problem. And how you go about that is up to you. But I kind of... I'm just not sure if I like that. Um, ooh, these are all real good. I really... I love having more of these, but I kind of need to get stuff to fill my shiv deck out. Because otherwise, what am I going to do? Great, it's these fellas. All right. Uh, dagger spray is always a good start, and then we can hit you. And then let's just poison y'all. Or not poison, but just, you know, pop them. And then get some defense up, and then you're going to hit me for the worst, so let's just weaken you. I could have uh, drunk this Thorns Potion to uh, make sure that they get hit off of every swing, but I'm going to save it. You're gone. That'll protect me. And then I can exhaust that. Cool. And now I will take no damage from this turn. And then killing you will be a matter of doing two whole damage. Oh, huh. That could be problematic. Um... No, oh, that's fine, then. Very annoying that he has one hit point left. I kind of wish that there was a mechanic involving overkill. Like, for example, if you overkill an enemy, you would get however much for each curse, add strength. That's cool. I don't like this card, so I'm going to skip it. Because otherwise it'll fluff out the deck. Actually, you can't see that. Um, but the total deck stuff... All right, um, and Venom. I want to get accuracy, but I won't. I will waste this a little bit. Um, let's do this because it'll poison him, and then you know what? Yeah, let's just pop this, huh? There's a problem just solved. Now half of this fight is gone. Like, the Centurion is okay as it goes, but, like, he's not really a problem now. Right. Be sure to use this. 11 damage. Um, let's discard a card. Ooh. Ooh. word perfectly perfectly comfortable with that that's good um let's go this way now oh good a sneko snekos annoy me so 
So the nice thing about getting choke off is that now we always are going to do just like choke with one of these is just so useful because now look, we've eviscerated his health. Perplexing Glare is one of the most annoying status effects in the game because look, this is free and that's cool. But something like a normal strike is now three cost. Uh, we have some discards. So that's cool. Um, oh God. That one, I guess. Ooh, Juzu Bracelet. That's useful. That means that these can reliably not be uh, hurty. It's a technical term. Hurty. Oh, yeah. Okay. First... We'll use that to discard that. Ooh, choke is good, but let's instead use well laid plans and we'll hold on to choke next turn. We'll blade dance and we'll just start doing some damage. And because we've used those three attacks from all those shivs, let's just hit this guy a whole bunch. Look at that. And then we'll hold on to choke. Easy peasy. Not bad at all. Ritual will add strength every turn, um, so the quicker you kill these guys, the better, but sometimes that's not an option. Uh... Hmm. That was a misplay. I probably should have put Choke up first. Whatever. One of the things about Choke is that um, it often goes to someone that you wish wasn't the target. Hmm. Well, why don't I show you a cool new technique that I learned? Just close the game. Uh, I try not to overuse this. But yes, you can just close the game and reset a fight. Um, let me try to fix that there. And then we just continue from where we left off. I try to not do this because it's cheating, but that's okay. So, same deal. Let's hit this guy instead, just for the sake of it. Hold on, a choke. Now we do this. Let's see. That'll deal three, but we can't really do that. That'll deal ten total. Okay, so we have to take this hit, but that's all right. Let's hold on to the knife, actually. But yes, um, it's a cheap thing, but like, sometimes this game kind of just feels tedious a little bit. Of just like trying to get the best possible outcome, but like, sometimes it's really annoying to try to, to just try over and over again and like, I've had some really, really salty runs. Where like, for example, let's just shout a random one out here. Um, I attempt to build something like a curse based deck for this, for the ironclad. 
but I do not get a, a drop of fire breathing until act three. And by then the damage is done and I can't make up the difference between me and all the other. Wow. Um, hi. Thank you. I cannot make up the difference between me and the other monsters. This one's nice. Upgrade them all. Why not? You know? So now... Let's grab this and this. And one of them. Because why not? Oh great, it's you guys again. Does this count as discarding? Nope. Sure doesn't. I guess we'll just take this damage then, huh? These two, man. Constantly healing your boyfriend is not a personality trait, I'm sorry to say. Uh, yes. Let's just finish you off. And then now we do one of these. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Um, boy. Boy, we're on low health, huh? Uh, yeah, I guess we'll just do that. Oh, yeah, we can keep Quick Slash, though. That's nice. Now we don't take any damage, so that's fortunate, at least. The thing that upgrades all strikes and defends is, like, so nice, but at the same time, it's, like, something that you cannot rely on. So we got these shivs here, but we can also just pop this and exchange them for upgraded shivs. Not that we actually need it, but, you know, it's cool. Flying these are very good. Uh, I'm going to need the health going into this fight. I might not even survive this one, but I just want to, uh, hmm. This one's really good. I love Hand of Greed. Really crappy draw to start off, though. Yeah, the nice thing about Hand of Greed is that it does not exhaust, like, the other equivalent cards. Some of them, so there, there are quite a few cards that are like, uh, do this, and if you do this, uh, you'll get a thing where it's like, I'll discard that since I can't use it anyway. Oh, look at that! We're drinking this, then. He's not getting out of this alive. None of you are. Oh, really? Got to use two shivs on him. That's unfortunate. Getting sweaty over here, you know? Let's do that because that's a good pop of damage. And this will give us three. Yeah. I would also love if leftover energy got turned into something. There is a um, artifact that makes you keep your leftover energy between turns, but it's not the default. And I just, you know, it's all right. Oh, this is good. Okay, so we can't get both of these. So another fifteen. That's okay. I guess we'll keep concentrate. Oh, yeah. The minion um, thing is interesting, but I kind of wish that it had more of a uh, impact on the game, shall we say? 
All right, you're both dealing one, and you're dealing 22 damage. Um, well, this will nearly definitely kill me. Wait, I think I have just enough. I'll have 25 health, right? Uh. Okay. Now would be a really good time to figure out how to kill this thing. Yeah, it doesn't look like that's the case, though. I didn't get a lot of artifacts this run, which is, you know, kind of on my fault. Let's do another. Day still young, you know. Another try. Yes, now. So you can ditch your starting relic and gain fresh shit. Ooh. Extra card. Ten cards, draw one card, and burn the next two curses. That's good, although unfortunately I did start with a curse. Uh, where's the guy? Okay. Let's go up this way. It'll be a little more... Onomori is really nice, but like I always seem to get it whenever I have already gotten curses and it doesn't do anything for curses already in your deck. You know? Like maybe it needs a patch because if you don't get it near the start of a run, it's just not that useful of a of a relic. Because like, you can have 10 curses in your deck and then you get Onomori and then it doesn't do anything, which is just kind of unfortunate. Well, this is a pretty easy pick. I'll take the uh, one damage. That's fine. Nice. It's really demoralizing to go back to the start of Slay the Spire and just be whacking away at, an, at some idiot with your default strikes and defends. Like, ugh. It's just kind of painful, you know? This is nice, though. The ability to just get more of these. Um, let's go for Distaction. And backflip. Get you out of there. And now, because I've made up the difference, we can actually catch up on, uh, on the damage here. So that's nice. Still attacking, though. Ooh, cool. Oh, wow. Hi. Unfortunately, I cannot use all these delicious, delicious strikes. So, yes. Normally, the silence starts with a thing that makes her draw more cards every round. Um, however, I don't really use it a lot because... Like, if, if, a, if I'm given the option to swap it out, I usually do so just because having more cards is not that useful to me. Great. Um, sometimes it's good for, like, the start of battles, but so many cards have things like... I don't know. Uh, what's the... Innate. So many cards have the feature innate on them, which means that they permanently will always just be in your inventory when you start. So, like, what's the point of having, you know, more cards if you can just get cards that are always going to be in your deck? And there's a lot of silent specific cards that act like that. Otherwise, that wouldn't bring it up. Um... Yes, the silence specifically has cards that behave, uh, that have a lot of innate on them. Let's go for shivs, huh? Quick slash. Quick slash just fits with the aesthetic of the shiv deck, but it doesn't actually do anything for it. But it does let you draw another card, which is nice. Yeah. Boop. These things are cute. But they're kind of annoying, because they always uh, proc their defense every round. 
So at the start of the game, where you always encounter these little bastards, it's really hard to kill them in one round because you cannot... Like, you hit them once and you proc their defense. And then hitting them again gets harder because their defense is up. Let's go with finisher. Dash. This is going to be easy. So we've done, what, four damage? Yeah, four attacks, so it's going to be six each, so that's 24. And you can see that when you start to get, like, things that add shivs to your deck every round, or shivs to your hand every round, and, like, you have three of those, and then you pop, like, another thing that adds shivs. Look at that, that was clean as hell. Now I will take no damage. But I'll get slimed. That's unfortunate. Um, I just really want you dead, man. Got four little bits of health left. So yeah. Normally a shiv deck relies on one having the... Um, basically the same thing. Normally the shift deck relies on one having the wrist blade, but you don't actually need it, and sometimes it can't even drop. I believe it is a boss only relic. It reliably drops from the second uh, the second boss. However, um, you can also get it off the first boss rarely. Uh, I mostly see it from the second boss, though. Which means that you only reliably can have, like, a really strong shiv deck when you're going... See, this is what I'm talking about. Infinite Blades will add a shiv to your hand for free every round. Let's get more block cards. I didn't have enough block last time. Ooh, okay. Let's just drink... Oh. Oh. What if we just solved a problem there? Isn't that nice? <sighs> okay, so how much? That's 18. Could just pop dash. Yeah, let's do that. Pop dash, and then these guys will not damage me. Unfortunately, I don't get to use any of my cool cards, but it's the way it crumbles. Because I do not have the ability to regenerate health, I cannot take stupid damage in fights. Oh, look at that. That's neat. Yes, um, I cannot take damage in fights. Um, it will just impede my forward progress. I unfortunately got to pop two of these. Quick Slash is nice because it's the same cost as a normal strike, but it just does more damage. Um, that's fine. I'll take that. It just does more damage and gives you another card. Um, what the hell? Let's get a poison stab. Predator is fun. So yes, after you beat the game once with every single character, you unlock... Uh, well, every time that you beat the game with a character, you unlock their key. The ruby key is always gotten from resting. That's a pretty good first turn. Ruby key is always gotten from resting. Um, the sapphire key, I believe it's called. Um, uh, 
Oh, wow. That's a little unfortunate, but that's okay. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Not bad at all. Sapphire Key's always gotten from fighting an elite, I think. And the Emerald is always gotten from... Uh, fighting... I've lost what the hell I'm talking about. One of the keys has gotten from fighting this thing, and one of them's gotten from this chest. It's tied to the relic within said chest, which means you cannot have both the relic and the key. You will have multiple chances to get the key, but it's not always reliable, so usually just best to get the key as soon as you can. Which is a little annoying. Backstab is good. Oop, we got more. Yeah, let's get more blade dancing. Get dancing. So you see, pop it open. Preserved insect. It's it's good, but damage is not really a problem for this build. For this character, either. Um, yeah, we have, we have Onomori, so we've now anointed this. And, ooh, that's good. When you play three attacks, you get four block. Considering how many attacks we're going to end up playing in the course of this, that's going to be real nice. So yeah, you can see that we've just gotten eight block just because we did. And we've burnt through half of this dude's health. Just in the first round. I kind of like this guy's mechanic, wherein um, he uh, gains strength every time you use a skill. But it's kind of annoying because it means that you like you can't take the next hit, so you block. But because you blocked, he does more damage to you. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. So you block more to try to, you know, avoid it. But every time his, you know, damage is just going up and up and up. Look at that. Easy. Yeah, Emerald Key is gotten from this guy. So now we have this so we can, you know, we don't have to worry about it. Um, let's let's go for all-out attack for now because we do not have the ability to cast much more than what we already have. Um, and then if we upgrade this, it'll make it innate so we can always cast it, which means that we will just essentially start everything with, you know... Uh, oh, sure, another curse. Gold. How nice. So yeah, now we have got a lot of gold, but... Uh, do I have anything in my deck I want to get rid of? This, but you can't get rid of it. Um, I hate getting this whenever you don't have... Like, I hate things where you just have to ignore them because there's nothing that you really need to do. Um, hmm, what else? Let's upgrade this because we're it's a guaranteed use. We're going to use it, so... I, I believe in the Dark Souls uh, mentality of things where, like, if you get something and you don't use it, you've wasted everything that you put in to get it. I just... I want to use it, man. You know, you gotta. Once you pop, you can't stop. Okay, let's do Predator. And we'll avoid some of that damage, but we'll take most of it. But the thing is, because of the way that this thing works, when these burn out, he does, he has less options. He cannot do as much. So as long as we just hit him enough, we'll just get that to proc, and then we don't need to worry about blocking as much. See, we just take less damage. Which is nice. The seer is annoying, but again, we have things that make it so we don't have to worry about it as much. Wow, look at that. Just keep going. Oh. Well, he doesn't have any poison. But thanks anyway, I guess.
Let's see if we can get anything else useful in here. We can't. Oh. Well, why don't we just do this? Because now that leaves our hand. We take no damage. And everything's great. <laughs> So yes, reliably having a lot of shiv is great. But considering that you can also have multiple casts of every single draw more cards. Like, Blade Dance is fine, but it's not free. Nice. I'll take the six damage off this. That's fine by me. Considering we're eating through his health. He's lost 200 health already. Ah, well. So the nice thing about burn is that it goes to your, uh, to your block first and not your health. So yeah, ideal shift deck is you get, like, so many casts of... No, get out of here. You get so many casts of... Uh, infinite Blades that you get, like, three or four added to your thing every single turn. <sighs> Sorry, that worried me. That scared me good and proper. Ooh, big finish. Look at that. Need a burrito. Um, hmm. Dad, I died all right. It is really good on enemies that have multiple targets, though. Uh, wrist blade. That's... Come on. It doesn't have any downsides. It's just really good. Uh, and then let's go here, because I want to I wanna spend all the cash money that I've got. Oh, but these guys are going to try to stand in my way. Well, sorry, fellas. What the hell? Let's just solve the problem, you know? Now we only take a damage, and we're back up to 69. Nice. Uh, that'll ensure that we do not take any more damage from him. That even more so. Ah, well. We probably wouldn't have been able to kill him even with all those shit. Actually, no, because we got the wrist blade now. So the wrist blade is nice because it's not just a shiv card. It is anything that costs nothing. So now, because this costs nothing, we've added more to it. Yeah, look at that. That's good. Add Just add shiv to your hand. More shivs. And hey, backstab. Alright. Tungsten Rod is great. Uh, hmm... Let's get Tungsten Rod. And this is a power card, so let's get it. And we're five short of that. Well, that's unfortunate. Whatever. All right, where are we heading from here? I, I kind of want to go up through here and just hit this bonfire. So let's hug the left. Upgrade all that. Yeah, it is really nice to just have upgraded strikes and defends, but like, man, um, my cunning potion adds all my shivs. I do have a lot of blade dance. Oh, that's useful. That means that we just don't have to worry about going into boss fights at full health. That's really useful. All right, so. Start by popping those. do that and one of those and he's just dead that's I believe that's called crowning where you just do so much damage uh, in like 
the first turn that you really don't have anything to worry about. Uh, I've changed my mind. Let's go to this bonfire and upgrade one of our things. Um, I'm thinking upgrade Panache. Because powers are just really good. Oh, great. It's this guy. Well, let's poison you and stab you and stab you again. And how about we stab you some more? Um, and now we take no damage. That's good. So yeah, this thing will add um, wound cards to your deck. Should you take proper damage while fighting him. Which is just really annoying. Hmm. Let's take the backflip and just block a little more of this. We'll, we will only block half of it and we'll take 9 damage, knocking us down to 60. Oh no, we'll go down to 60 too because of our lovely tungsten rod. Let's get these on out. Text and Rod's really useful. <sighs> this guy does make me a little fearful, though. Oh. Well, not useful. <laughs> Ooh, Peace Pipe. That's good. Caltrops. It's not good to take damage, but we may as well mitigate it somewhat. Uh, purple Fire Spirits. Ooh. Um, I don't really know how this works. Let's give you that, huh? <gasps> That's solid. That's real solid. Sneko Skull. Ooh. Adds poison to your poisons. That's, uh, that's, that's useful. Ooh, this is good. Ancient of Resurrection Nia was exiled to the bottom of the spire. Seeking vengeance, Nia blesses outsiders, using them for her purposes. Those resurrected by Nia only remember fragments of their past. So, anything that costs two or more will just play twice. Which is just really plain freaking useful. That's great. Ooh, let's duplicate a card in our deck. What should we duplicate? Um, Panache is good. I'm glad we didn't go to that bonfire. That's a really good. Uh, that's a really good piece. Um, Today is the day I must settle the score with the murder of my beloved pet noodles. Till then, you may not pass. Why don't you bet on who you think will emerge victorious? Hey, all right. We won the bet. That's cool. Um, and then we can go through here. Get a little heal. We might not need it, though. Ah, oh, great. It's these guys. I hate these guys. And you know what? Why don't we just get some shivs going? Oh, crap. I could have just waited and uh, used all the shivs on him and it would have just procced on him. Oh, well. That's fine. And again, our inanimate carbon rod helps us. Let's use distraction. Sure, I guess. Ooh, poison stab. That means we do more. I really like the way that poison works in this game. I do rather enjoy poisoning decks. Uh, pretty much in anything, now that I think of it. Blade Dance. Oh, nice. That was really clean. First time you take damage, loot, draw three. Power potion. Slice is good. Upgraded slice for that matter. 
Um, when you shuffle, gain two block. Hmm. We're only going to shuffle every... Well, then again, we do have a couple of things that make it so. We shuffle more. Um, and I actually feel good about going in with just the health regen. So let's just upgrade a card. Blade Dance is always a good choice. I kind of want to do a run with Fusion Hammer and just rely on either cards that I already have upgraded or things like... Um, Hey, look at that. We take no damage now. Uh, let's add a power just because this guy's kind of... Oh. That's cool. So now Shiv's be doing 12 damage. That's useful. Um... Hmm. Yeah, look at that. So Necronomicon is just really good. Oh, look at that. Cool. Radical. So yeah, Necronomicon allowing us to just draw more or uh, do more damage. I really love it. Um... Let's discard Finisher. We're not really going to get the chance to use it that much. Alright. Now we will only take 13 damage. Thanks to our handy dandy... Tungsten Rod. Oh wow. Okay. Definitely that. This. This. Ah, oh, crap! Why don't we cheat? Ordinarily, I wouldn't, but I have uh, bad attention problems. I still need to get diagnosed. I made a dumb mistake, I will admit. But why should I have to suffer for it? Ah, <laughs> uh, well. All right, let's try to remember what we did exactly. We slugged this down. Yeah. I think it was only like round four or something. So it's fine. We didn't really have to. We don't have to do that much again. All right. Do dash. Did strike. Slice. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't remember if we used backflip or not. Let's pop some of these on. I think we did. Oh well. We've now changed the past. It's unfortunate. First we use Panache, then we use Shiv, and then we use Blade Dance, and do some more shiving. And then we use another... Let's use a Poison Stab and get rid of this. And then we use a Blade Dance. So yes, because we because Blade Dance is a card in and of itself, but then it gives us more cards to play, we keep proccing Panache. I like that he taunts you and we get weaker. Normally someone taunting me would make me angrier and want to hurt them even more. Hmm. Let's go for Caltrops and all at attack. Wow, look at that. 28 damage. It's popped. So yeah, he rinses his poison off when he gets down below like 300 health, 300 damage taken. Okay. 
Uh, now let's take 48 damage. Which would put us at, like, what, 30 health? No, oh, 46. Thanks to all my armor. Oh, man, this would have been the perfect time for finisher, but we did too much damage to him too quick. Ah, oh, well. Suffering from success. Grand Finale is so hard to get to proc. Uh, Fusion Hammer. Let's do it. I I will take that. That's fine. All right, where are we heading? Uh, let's go up this way, huh? That seems a little more rational. We might get to the uh, Spire. That's cool. Infinite Blades. God, look at these things. Oh. It's rather nice of you. Okay. Now, Panake. One of you. One of you. Yeah, let's do 15 damage. Shabooms. I really want to I really want to be able to take him out. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Um, more shivs. And then the ability to discard and draw. That's nice. One thing that is always nice is getting things that allow you to... How close are we to a shop? Not very, so let's grab that. I don't need to screw with you guys. Um... It doesn't even show up. Oh, we already clicked it. Well, I guess that means we have to do it. Fuck. Um, let's get rid of distraction. It's not really that useful. <laughs> For this build, at least. Also, the more that we have... Oh, neat. I love this. Because, like, we go back and, like... Oh yeah, so the effects of every card actually does proc, just as you would expect. So, we actually will draw four more cards next turn. Why not? Goop spray. Alright. Panache. Um, Cloak and Dagger. One of you, one of you, one of you, and then finish. 30 damage! <laughs> that poor guy. He had no idea what hit him. Uh, ooh, add strength for curse. That's really good. That's exactly what I wanted, in fact. Um, let's lose 10 HP, which will actually only be 9. And then let's just heal it back. Why not? A little bit of a little bit of a waste of some of the heal, but that's okay. We'll get more after this. Oh fuck! I hate this guy. <laughs> okay, blades, backflip. So the nice thing is that the more you stack on him, the more damage he takes. So we were, we've been able to do a lot more of his health in one turn than normally would be able to. And yeah, as you may have seen in another video, he counts down. This is going to be Poggies. Oh, crap. 
could have played Panache earlier and gotten so much more out of it. I probably would have gotten like three procs of it by now. All right, we played 10 attacks. It'll do 18 every time. Oh my God. <laughs> Bro. Bro. Have I taken, I haven't taken any damage. Let's do, yeah, there we go. I didn't take any damage on that. That's crazy. Fair in a bottle is awesome. All right, let's see what we get out of this. Regal pillow, that's nice. Kind of useless for us, but that's okay. Let's lose 10 HP. Um, free block and free healing, that's nice. And then I guess we'll just get more health. Um, take a quick stop off here. See if we can pick anything up. Um, hmm. I would love to be able to sell things. Ooh, those are all good. See, so yeah, having having a lot of um. Let's get rid of this because it encourages me to get hit and I don't like that. Wow. This guy's a real problem, but that's okay. Let's see if there's anything I... Again, there's nothing I really want to get rid of. I guess we'll just rest, yeah. Like, we have so far beyond the ability to get so much health from that thing, because we're getting 24 because of our high HP. And then we're getting even more because of the pillow. That's another 15 added on. Let's go after you, because you have less to be getting on with. 21 damage. Oh my god! Let's put that on you then, huh? Spread it a little more evenly. This guy is a real problem to fight. He is my... He's one of my least favorite bosses. This will help immensely, though. Yes, I meant to hit that one. Our ability to just, like, cast over and over and over will really, really help in taking him down. Uh, and then how much are we taking? 28 plus 6. That's okay. That's not bad. Panache. Nice, nice. Let's get rid of you. Let's do that to you, actually. This will add three shivs. This will add one, two, three, four. This is better. Wow, that damage, though. This might actually be a pretty good run. Sometimes I have difficulty even getting to the, like, after the final boss. God damn you. So, yeah, we killed him. Resurrection. He returns. Because, of course, he does. And then he'll just do 43 damage, because that's fun. Um, hmm. God 
damn it. I was really hoping. Whatever. That's fine. Big damage. Half my health in one turn. But that's okay. Let's drop that. Let's pop that. Ooh. Um. The bonus damage is really nice there. And then we get the uh, we get the shield. We're also going to have a lot more options in terms of our uh, health. So that's cool. So that one of these monsters adds um, a bad card to your deck. I'm it makes me so salty. I'm like, "How dare you, sir?" All right. Let's get a normal one. God, what if there was like an evil frog and he was like his his shtick was that he was like croak and dagger? That might that's some good damage. Um we can survive that. That's only 39. And because it's uh taken in multiple parts, each piece will be reduced separately. So four shivs, or replace it with more shivs. Look at that. Easy peasy. Uh, so I guess this run is actually going to show the final boss. So yeah, we get to the heart. I've done this many times. Be because we have all of these, we can keep on going. Isn't that lovely? Ah, oh, man. The weakness is the weakness from Red Mask is nice. So yeah, this is completely linear. Start with this. Do I have anything I want to not have? I kind of don't really want madness. I gave it some thought. I actually don't like having it. Last chance to buy stuff. And then, these are some of my least favorite enemies in the whole game. Um, they are the only enemies in the game that have this mechanic surrounding. Um, let me see here. So that's 12 plus 14. Or it's 18 plus 10. I think it's better to face this guy. So yeah, it's just kind of annoying. Um, this is the only time in the whole game where this mechanic shows up at all. And I talked about this with my friend. It's meant to make the fight more interesting, but I don't really know if it does that. Okay, uh, let's start burning things. That's free. That's free. That's free. Guess we'll do that. Discard and draw. Get rid of you. Let's do a blade dance. Oh, we've done quite a lot of attacks. Why don't we just... Oh, look at that. And then we'll get our free defend up. Now we will only take 14 damage, I think, but a little less, actually. Yeah, only 12 damage. Look at that. Not going to help me that much, but whatever. Ooh. That's just such a good card, but I can't do it. But hey, we're going to get to see the heart, so that's neat. Look at that. Clean. Oh, wow. That's really useful. Um, Quick slash again. All right. We're going to get the heart. I've never beaten the heart before. Um, So it has this thing, Invincible, which means that it cannot lose more than 300 HP per turn. And it has 
a uh, beat of death. Whenever you play a card, you take a piece of damage. Now, luckily to me, that goes to you know, this. Uh, let's get rid of that. Hey, look at that. That's pretty useful. All right, so we've done almost 100 damage to it. What is that? 97 damage. Um, the heart is really, really hard. I've never beaten it before. Um, and I don't expect to. Uh, dash will be useful because we're going to get that proc twice. This and a shiv means that we're going to get some of that. Um... I should have drunk this earlier, actually, but considering I'm never, ever going to have a chance to use it ever again, ever. So one of the nice things is that because it is a uh, one of those, like, it only hits every so often, means we actually only take a very small amount of damage. Oh, vulnerable? Thank you. So this is kind of unfortunate because we have a lot of things that do small amounts of damage, which means that we're going to take more damage from Beat of Death. We kind of need that. Great, now we're only going to take... A lot of damage. <gasps> oh, 32 damage in one swing. It's quite the fell swoop there, my mans. Um, proc Predator. Poison Stab. This is just normal shivs, so let's go for... Let's go for it. Aw, oh, man. Okay, so this is when the fight gets even more annoying. Beat of Death is doubled. Oh, it's not doubled now, but he adds things like Artifact to him. That'll be useful. Let's put some HP on. Oh, we're taking no damage because of... Interesting. Tungsten Rod, shout out. Um, Let's put some of that on, though, huh? Crap. Okay. All right. Everyone squeeze your butt cheeks. Oh, that damage is so not good. Coming up next is 48 damage. That's fine. Okay. I don't have the ability to take that, but luckily I've still got fair in a bottle. <laughs> oh my god! <sighs> Fuck me, dude. <laughs> I'm just playing these kind of just... It didn't proc fair in a bottle. I still have it. That's really useful. Now we have more beat of death. Let's make you vulnerable. Sorry, Predator. All right. This might just kill us. Like, even with Fair in a Bottle, because it hits multiple times. Ugh. Fuck you. Not quite the top. Eat my ass. But yeah, that's... That's Slay the Spire. That's a whole run. We even got to the heart, but we didn't kill it. I never have. Um, you can see that we have the option for Ascensions. And they go up to level 2, I think. Yeah, I only have up to level 2 now. Um... You can set seed. Oh. That's nice. 
Maybe I'll do that. But um, I've now played about 70 hours of Slay the Spire. I'm not quite an expert in it, but I am an expert in roguelikes, and I have friends who are experts in deck builders. Ultimately, I think that this might be a, a game that I disagree with. Um, I do really, really like the ability to play a just really solid roguelike deck builder. I love it, in fact. I think it's fantastic. But I think things like how fights are not random. The fight itself is random, but the enemies in it are predetermined based on what it is. Um, I'm not sure I agree with that. You know, I don't like how certain mechanics are very, very underused. Like, minion is could be used a little more, and surrounded is only used in one battle in the whole game. And, like, I just don't know about that. Make myself bigger since I'm talking. Um... So yeah, ultimately, like, it is a very good game and very well made. As an expert in roguelikes, I'm just not sure I agree with some of the choices, but it's very good. So I recommend buying it, playing it for 70 hours like I have, because I have played 70 hours of this game. Uh, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I just checked my Steam to make sure. It's very good. It's very, very good. But... It's not my favorite roguelike, but it is very good. Uh, anyway, I'll see you guys next time. I've been Alfred. This has been Friday Night Roguelikes. Um, season 2 now. Uh, in case it hasn't been obvious, Season 2 is going to be more of a change. I'm going to play roguelikes that I really want to sink my teeth into, um, like Slay the Spire, because I've, done, I've recorded five episodes of Slay the Spire. Most of them are unusable because of shenanigans involving audio, but... I did play a lot more of Slay the Spire than I did for, like, other roguelike games. Um, I might replay some ones that I didn't get to spend enough time with. Who knows? Sky's the limit. Uh, but until then, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for sitting with me. Hope you enjoyed it. My name is Alfred, the Trufer L. Friedrich, and this has been Slay the Spire. Bye. <laughs>